Hey guys, Michael with Quiet Line. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I wanted to make a video that I would say is probably the single most important video I've ever made. Uh, maybe the most important video I've ever made. Um, it's a video about how to calculate your pricing. Um, we did a lot uh, with trying to figure out our numbers last year. And as I mentioned in other videos, we hired a consultant. As far as pricing, I was in this industry for years and years and had no clue on how to price my work. You know, the problem with our type of business is that most people price the way I do. So what I mean by that is, you know, let's say I'm getting into the lawn care business and I want to start mowing lawns. Um, most of us, what we will do is we will try to see what other people are charging in our area. Uh, we'll ask for advice on Facebook forums, whatnot, and that's how we kind of arrive at our pricing. So, you know, we go show up on a lawn, um, look at it and say, oh, that looks like a $40 lawn. Um, and the problem with that is you're just guessing. Um, you don't have a true idea of what your costs are. Uh, you don't know, you know, you don't really know how much time that is. But just imagine that in any other industry, you know, imagine that uh, at like Walmart, uh, let's say they have a new, pro new product and they throw it on the shelf. Uh, do you think Walmart looks at that product and they say, oh, that looks like about a $5 product, uh, you know, and that's how they arrive at their pricing? Uh, of course not. They know exactly what that product cost them. They know exactly what kind of margin they want to make and they mark it up and that's how they price something. Uh, and that's how the same it should be for our service business. Um, the problem is that, that is that that's a little bit more complicated and you know most of us can't wrap our heads around uh, how to figure that. But I'm going to show you the basics of it and it's actually very simple. And I'm also gonna share the link uh, to buy a spreadsheet from the person that we, the, uh, the consultant that helped us. And this spreadsheet will help you calculate your pricing uh, and your hourly rate within, you know, half a day at the most. Um, but that's from Wayne Bowles, Profits Are Us, and the spreadsheet is called Know Why You Charge What You Charge. But I'm going to go through the basics of it to show you the gist of it. So you see that it's much simpler than you think it is. And this, if you never did anything else, if you never got anything else right with your business, if you figured out this one piece, you'll be way ahead of 99.9% .9 of other companies. Because otherwise, you're just guessing right now. Your pricing might be good, it might not be good, but you don't know. With this, you will very quickly be able to determine your pricing, uh, determine an, your margin, and it's just gonna make everything much easier. So let's get into it. I'll show you the basics of pricing. Okay guys, let's get started. Um, I know this is very boring, uh, but what I've learned over the years is that the boring stuff is what makes you money. Uh, and while it's cool to look at trucks and tools and things like that, and all that stuff is important, uh, knowing your numbers is, the most important thing you can do in your business that's going to ensure uh, the longevity in your business, uh, ensure you're making the amount of money you need to make to continue to be in business and grow. Um, so when you're pricing, there's basically three components that you need to calculate in order to figure your pricing. And those three components are your direct cost, your indirect cost, and then your desired profit margin. That's it. So direct cost, that would be costs that are directly tied to whatever service you're doing. So let's say you have a mowing service. Direct cost would be the direct labor. So if you have an employee, it would be their labor cost, whoever's performing that service. Um, if it's you, then it would be your labor cost and you need to make sure you include your own cost if you're the one doing that labor. Uh, it's going to be the tools that are doing that job. So your mowers, your weed eaters, your, uh, you know, uh, edgers, blowers, all that stuff. Um, it's going to include the vehicle that you're using specifically for that service. So uh, if you're pulling a truck or you're, you know, driving some kind of box truck, whatever vehicles, uh, you know, carrying that crew to do that mowing service. Uh, and then any materials that you're going to use, you know, uh, if you're doing a mulch job, it would include mulch. Uh, in any other materials, those would all be direct cost. 
The next thing you need to calculate is your indirect cost. Some people call this overhead. They're a little bit different, but you know, you can kind of use them, use either term. Um, but indirect cost would be everything else, all of your other expenses not directly tied to that service. So it would be your rent and utilities at your shop. Uh, it would be things like your liability insurance, uh, things like your cell phone, office salary. So if you have a, a people in the office or you have an owner's salary, uh, you would count that. Um, here's one little thing. You don't want to count your salary twice because it's going to mess up your calculation. So if you're counting your own salary as the owner in direct labor, you're paying yourself an hourly rate for the jobs that you do. Uh, you don't want to double dip and do that twice with the office salary. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, business loans. You know, this isn't loan specific to equipment like your, your truck and your tools. Uh, this would be loans like you have an SBA loan for your whole business or you have a business credit card, something like that that's not directly tied to that labor. Um, but those are the two components. And then the last component is once you calculate those, uh, you want to add in your desired profit margin because we're in business to make money. And if you just charge for these two, uh, you know, you'd be breaking even. So I'm going to get into some examples on how to calculate your direct cost. It's actually a lot simpler than you think. It just takes some time uh, and you have to make some assumptions. Uh, let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay, guys, I'm going to go through some really simple, quick examples. Um, there are more details than what I'm showing you, um, but this is just giving you the gist of how you do the calculation. Like I said, if you get that spreadsheet, it will help walk you through the rest of it. But I just want to show you how the calculation goes for each of the parts of the direct and indirect cost real quickly. Um, so let's, uh, let's address direct labor first. So this would be your mowing crew. Th this is the calculation you would go through to calculate, you know, to have that part of your direct cost uh, figured out. So let's say you're paying somebody $15 an hour. Well, on top of that, you're going to have other costs like their FICA withholdings. You're going to have unemployment. Uh, you're going to have workers comp. Uh, you're going to have things like that. Now, if you're paying them benefits and paid time off and vacation and stuff like that, this you'll be able to calculate that with the know why you charge what you charge spreadsheet. But I don't want to overcomplicate this simple example. Um, so we're just taking it as somebody that doesn't have any of that stuff. Um, but if you add all those percentages to the base hourly rate of $15, you're going to come to a total of $19.05 per hour. And that is the direct cost, hourly cost, for your employee. Um, if you have two, you know, you're going to do this for both of them. And that's going to be the hourly rate for both of them. Now that we've figured that, let's go ahead and figure the cost of our other direct, uh, direct cost. Okay, so let's calculate the hourly cost of our vehicle. Um, this will probably be the busiest one that we have to do. It's a pretty simple calculation, but there's just several things. So uh, this will probably be the seem the most complicated. But basically what we're doing with everything is we're trying to convert our cost to hourly cost because we sell our services by the hour. So we need to know what it costs us per hour uh, for each of those costs involved in our pricing. Um, so that's what we're doing. So let's look at our, our vehicle. So this would be your mowing truck or, you know, whatever, whatever direct vehicle that you're looking at. Uh, first, we're going to take the purchase price. We'll just use an example and say we purchased the vehicle for $10,000. Um, let's look at the expected life. So you're going to, you know, assume that, hey, I think this vehicle is going to last me five years minimum. Average miles per year, uh, if, you know, if you've been doing this a few years, you have a pretty good idea, but if not, you're going to have to make some assumptions. So uh, let's just say you're going to be driving at 10,000 miles a year. Um, fuel cost per year, uh, that's a simple calculation. We're just multiplying or taking the total miles divided by the miles per gallon that your vehicle gets. So let's say you're driving this 10,000 miles and your vehicle gets 20 miles to the gallon. You're just going to divide that out and then multiply that number by whatever the average price per gallon is. So this year, you know, we very well could be hitting $4 plus per gallon. So that's what I did with that calculation. And then it told me that I'm going to be spending about $2,000 a year on fuel. 
Um, we're going to throw in the other things, the other cost, annual cost for that vehicle, which would include insurance, uh, maintenance, you know, your oil changes, stuff like that, any kind of routine maintenance, repairs, you know, if you're going to have to change tires, change brakes. Um, and we're just going to assume that's $1,000. And like I said, these numbers, I'm just I'm putting these numbers out there to be simple. Obviously, these numbers are on the low side for a lot of this stuff, but I'm just trying to give you an example on how to calculate it. Um, but if you add up all these things, it tells you the total annual cost. So I added the 10,000 plus the 2,000 plus the 1,000, which was uh, 13,000. And I divided that over the life, expected life of the vehicle, the five years. And that tells me that each year this vehicle is going to cost me $2,600. Now, I need to figure out a way to be able to divide this $2,600 out over the amount of hours that I'm going to use this vehicle so that I can arrive at what number I need to uh, enter into the calculation for that hourly charge to, to recoup my cost to replace this vehicle. Um, so to do that, a simple way to do that is let's break it down to the cost per mile. So if we divide that $2,600 by 10,000 miles, it arrives at a number of 26 cents per mile. Now, if we multiply that by the average distance between our stops, let's say you're mowing and your average customers are five miles apart, um, let's just multiply that out. Uh, 26 cents times five miles would arrive at an hourly cost of $1.30 per hour. So that is our direct cost for our vehicle based on these numbers. Um, and like I said, we're getting everything broken down to an hourly charge uh, because our whole goal here is to be able to recoup our cost to replace our vehicles, to pay our labor, to replace our equipment, and all of that stuff, uh, you know, with, with our hourly rate. Because if you're not, and what the problem, the problem is a lot of people never do that. Uh, they're just charging based on their overhead, so, you know, their, their bills every month. So they're like, oh, my rent's this much. Uh, my other expenses are this much, so I just need to charge this hourly rate. Uh, I own my truck, I own my mower, I don't have any payments or loans, so I don't need to charge for that. Well, that's not true at all because you're not charging for the equipment your hat that you have. You're charging to be able to recoup that cost to replace it later. And what a lot of people run into is these guys get into business, they have their equipment, they're not charging enough to replace it, and then two, three, four, five years down the road when their vehicles are breaking down and their equipment's breaking down, they don't have the money to pay for it and they're out of business. So that is why we're calculating all this stuff so that we can calculate our, at, our overhead recovery, our asset recovery to be able to replace our stuff. So let's do another example with our equipment and that'll give you the idea so that you can kind of calculate for yourself. Okay, so we've calculated the cost of our labor. We've calculated the cost of our vehicle, our uh, vehicle that's used, actually used in the service. And now we need to calculate our equipment cost. And we're gonna do this for each piece of equipment on that setup. So if it's a mowing crew, you're gonna calculate the hourly cost for your mower, uh, each weed eater, each blower, each uh, edger, whatever other tools you might have on that vehicle. Um, I'm going to do the mower, and it's the same process for all the other pieces of equipment. It's really simple calculation. We're just going to take the purchase price of the mower that you're using, and we'll just assume that you're using like a, you know, like a 30-inch X mark or some kind of $2,500 walk behind or something like that. You know, that would be our example. But whatever mower you're using, plug in the purchase price. Uh, so for this mower, the purchase price is $2,500. Uh, the expected life is two years. Um, I like to match the expected life with the act what the warranty is for the, for the piece of equipment. The reason I do that is so that I can make sure I actually recoup that cost just in case that piece of equipment goes out uh, after the warranty period. Um, if it lasts longer than that, then that's even better for me. Um, but I want to make sure that I'm recouping to be able to replace that vehicle to replace that piece of equipment. Uh, at the end of the war warranty period, just in case I have to. Um, let's say annual fuel repairs and maintenance is another $500. Uh, that's going to bring our total annual cost, or our total cost to $3,000. 
divide that by the two years and it gives us a, an annual cost of $1,500 to run that mower. Uh, now we need to break that down to an hourly rate. Um, and to do that, it's pretty simple. Uh, it's going to take some time studies or some experience and it's going to be based on your piece of equipment. But for our average size lawn, uh, we would run this mower, say, 20 minutes per lawn. We mow about 10 lawns per day uh, in this example. Uh, so you multiply that 20 minutes per lawn times 10 lawns per day. We mow five days a week, so we multiply by five days a week. And then we multiply by how many weeks a year that you're actually mowing, uh, which in this example, we'd say 30. So when you multiply all those together, it's going to give you a really big number because that's in minutes. All we got to do to get that to hours is divide that by 60. So when you do that, five, you know, 20 minutes times 10 lawns a day times five days per week times 30 weeks a year, all that divided by 60 it gives you 500 hours per year. That's your total expected annual usage for that piece of equipment. Now it's real simple. We just got to divide the $1,500 per year cost divided by 500 hours, and that arrives at a cost per hour of $3 for that mower, for that piece of equipment. Uh, I'm not going to run through the examples of the other pieces of equipment like your string trimmers and your blowers and your edgers because it's exactly the same, but let's just you know, plug in some numbers real quick. Let's just say it's two fifty for the trimmer an hour, two fifty for the edger, and two dollars for the blower, and that's going to arrive us at a total of ten dollars per hour for our equipment. Um, so we've got those costs. We've got our direct cost. Now let's go and let's calculate our indirect cost or our overhead. Okay, so we've calculated our direct cost. Now we need to figure out what our indirect cost or overhead is. And this number that we're going to arrive at is going to be a percentage. And this number you're going to apply to any service. So whereas the direct costs are going to be different for each service, uh, you know, example, you have a company and you offer a mowing service. The equipment, the direct labor, all the costs associated with that service are going to be different than if you have also have a fertilization truck with different equipment, a different cost of vehicle, a different labor amount, uh, and so on and so forth. What's going to be the same for all of your services is your overhead percentage because that's everything else. That's all of your other cost as a percentage. So it's pretty simple. Um, now there can be, uh, I'm making this much simpler. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm putting a lot less things than are really going to be on here. Um, but you can easily look at your bank statement, you can look at your profit and loss statement, um, and you can get all this other stuff. It's basically everything else not directly associated with the labor. So some examples would be your rent, uh, your utilities, uh, the owner's salary outside of what you pay yourself for direct labor if you're still working in the field, uh, your credit card fees, your marketing uh, any kind of loans on the business, again, not on specific vehicles that are already counted in direct cost, but, you know, let's say you have your personal vehicle you use to do estimates or marketing or something like that. Uh, you want to make sure you include that stuff in overhead. Um, let me read off just some other stuff that's on ours just to give you some ideas. Um, that would be your liability insurance, you know, maybe your any other salaries, like if you have a maintenance person. Um, any other loans, if you have like SBA loans, uh, company credit cards, phone, bit, you know, your, your cell phones. Uh, let's see here. I'm just reading through all mine. Any kind of bank fees, uh, any vehicle expenses, like I said, for those other vehicles that aren't already accounted for with your direct cost. Uh, education and training. You know, if you're, if you're going to conferences like Loncology or you're paying your guys to do training. Uh, stuff like that would all be counted in in uh, this uh, indirect cost. Um, credit card processing fees, other business expenses, pretty much anything else is not direct, directly, you know, direct cost. Um, so in this example, I made it pretty simple. We just had rent. We said we were paying $6,000 a year. Uh, utilities, $5,000 a year. Owner's salary, $30,000 a year. Uh, your credit card fees, 3%, uh, 
you know, just, uh, you know, depend on what yours is. That came to $6,000 a year. Your marketing budget, 8%. Uh, in this example, $16,000 a year. Uh, an SBA loan that you're paying $1,000 a month for, uh, $12,000 a year. So we total all that up and it comes to $75,000 per year. That's our other indirect cost, our overhead, not counting direct cost. What we have to do now is we have to project how much revenue you think you're going to do this year um, because that's how we're going to figure out this percentage. So let's say that we project that we are going to do $200,000 in revenue this year. Uh, you know, based on past growth, based on, you know, what, you know, what we think we're going to hit this year. All you're going to do is you're going to divide that 75,000, divide it by 200,000, and that's going to give you a percentage. It's going to be, in this example, it's going to be 0.375 or 37.5%. So that's really as simple as it is to do it, to calculate your overhead percentage. It's just adding up all of your other expenses Divide and dividing them by your projected revenue for the year. And like I said, in this example, it came out to 37.5%. So we've calculated our direct hourly cost, which is going to be a dollar amount for this particular service and this crew. Uh, we've calculated the percentage, our overhead percentage. Uh, now let's add in our profit margin and then we can see what our hourly price needs to be to be, you know, to be able to hit our profit goals. Okay, so let's put it all together. We've calculated our direct cost, which added up to $30.25 per hour, including our labor, our equipment, and our vehicle. Uh, we've calculated our overhead percentage, which came to 37.5%. We're going to multiply the $30.25 per hour direct cost by 1.375, and that gives us a very important number. That's called our break-even. Uh, and in this case, it was $41.60 per man hour. Um, another little side note, we're doing this all based on one person crews. Uh, this is your man hour rate for each person. So if you have two people on a crew, it's double this. So just keep that in mind. But our break even is $41.60 per hour. That means if somebody goes out, you have one person going out mowing and they work 10 hours, they need to make $416 minimum for you to be able to break even. If they make any less than that, you are losing money. So your break even is the very minimum you can make and not lose money. But we didn't get in business to break even. We want to make money. So once you have that number, go ahead and add your desired profit margin. And in this example, we'll just say 20%. So we're going to multiply the 4160 times 1.2, and that's going to get arrive at our target man hour rate of 49.91 per hour. So if you have somebody going out to work, a one-man crew going out to work, uh, they need to make basically $500 in a 10-hour window for them to hit your target hourly rate and hit your 20% profit margin. If you have two guys going out, they need to make $1,000 in that same 10 hours. So um guys this was just a simple example example with numbers i made up please do not look at 49 dollars an hour and think you need to charge 49 dollars an hour that's probably low in every market i'm just giving an example um but the cool thing about this is is it's much simpler than you probably thought it just takes a little bit of work to figure to arrive at this number but once you get this number it you understand how silly it is when we in the past when we asked other people what they're charging or look at what our competitors in our market are charging or hey what would you charge for a quarter acre lot or whatever because if you see this your numbers your pricing is based on your particular business with your particular expenses with the equipment that you use with the what you're paying your labor etc etc you could be mowing the same exact property as somebody else and charge the same price and you're making 20% margin and that guy's losing 20% because his cost might be different than yours. So while you need to have a, a good idea of what's going on in your market to kind of be aware of pricing, 
it really doesn't apply to your business. You need to be able to come up with the pricing that's specific to your business so that you hit your desired margin. Um, the other cool thing about this is it allows you to run scenarios. So, for example, with us, after we learned this last year, we started, we looked at our current setup and we used to operate two man crews out of a big box truck with a big ride on mower. When we calculated our hourly cost, it was way more than what we were charging and we figured out very quickly that we were losing money. By being able to have this calculator, we could very easily plug in scenarios, you know, like saying, hey, if we switch to Toyota Priuses, which are much lower cost per hour, if we switch to these push mowers, if we switch to one man crews, what's this going to do to our hourly rate? And when we did that, we discovered that we could turn a service that was losing money for us into one that was profitable. Uh, and that's the cool thing about this. You won't have to guess like, hey, if I do this or if I add a third crew member or if I do what, whatever, you know, is this going to help my bottom line? You can actually do this stuff and fit, calculate this stuff out beforehand. And as one person said, it's like a cheat code that 99.9% .9 of people will never have right here. But this is how you calculate your target man hour rate. I highly encourage that you purchase the Know Why You Charge What You Charge spreadsheet. We'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, it's probably, I think it's $120 or $130, but it's the best money you will ever spend in your business. Um, but if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Uh, like I said, if you get that spreadsheet, it'll do all this for you. Uh, you just enter numbers. You don't have to do all the math and all that. But like I said, if there's any one thing you do for your business, this is what I highly recommend. Uh, thank you for watching. Hope you're all doing well and ready to crush it in 2022.